Good evening YouTube. It's going to be an interesting day in British politics tomorrow, particularly for the Labour Party and indeed also for atheists, because tomorrow the new leader of the Labour Party and leader of the opposition um, is going to be announced after the uh, Labour's in, Labour Party's internal election process. There are five candidates, uh, Ed Miliband, David Miliband, Andy Burnham, Ed Balls and Diane Abbott, and it's almost certainly going to be one of the two Millibands, Ed or David. Uh, the older brother is David Miliband, former Foreign Secretary, the younger brother Ed Miliband, former Secretary of State for Energy and Climate Change. Now, the conventional wisdom is that Ed Miliband is slightly to the left of his brother. I think if that's true, it's a, it's very slight indeed, and it's more about mood music than anything else. Although, I think both recognise that the Labour Party does have a lot of reconstruction to do, and at the same time has to provide an effective opposition to the coalition government. At a guess, I would say that David Miliband is going to get the most first preferences. It's a preference ranking system. Um, at least from well, from from the three colleges. There's a college of members, one of us affiliated socialist societies and unions, and one for MPs. And w Ed Miliband will win if he picks up enough transfers as other candidates are knocked out. I say it's going to be interesting for atheists because they are, in fact, both atheists. Uh, they're of Jewish extraction. Their father, Ralph Miliband, was a noted Marxist intellectual, they're nowhere near him in politics, um, but they are both atheists. At the moment, the Deputy Prime Minister, Nick Clegg, is also an atheist. So I do just wonder how, um, you know, if it's noticed at all, that will go down in the US at the moment, given the current trend for religiosity, particularly if the one of the Miller bands were to become Prime Minister uh, after Mr Cameron, which is by no means impossible. Now, after the election for the leader uh, and after party conference, the Labour Party, when it's in opposition, actually elects members of the Shadow Cabinet. Uh, all of the MPs vote um, and the top 19 of the candidates um, are elected to the shadow cabinet and then the prime minister gets to put them or oh, sorry the leader of the opposition gets to put them where um, they think it's appropriate there are 43 candidates uh, 29 are men 14 are women there's uh, the decision that's been made is that the gender makeup of the shadow cabinet should represent the should reflect the gender makeup of the Parliamentary Labour Party, Labour MPs. Um, at the moment, it's 31.5% uh, female. So of the 19 uh, posts available in the Shadow Cabinet, at least six will be filled by women, um, which I have to say I wholly support. I think it's a, it, it's a good thing. Um, you know the reasons why I've also supported and continue to support all women shortlists. Um, the list of people running, some names are familiar, some less so, but Douglas Alexander, Hilary Benn, Ben Bradshaw, Roberta Blackman Woods, Kevin Brennan, Liam Byrne, Chris Bryant, Vernon Coker, Yvette Cooper, Mary Cree, Wayne David, the twins Angela and Maria Eagle, another sibling rivalry there, Caroline Flint, Mike Gapes, Barry Gardner, Helen Goodman, Peter Hain, David Hanson, Tom Harris, John Healy, Meg Hillier, Hugh Iranka Davies, Alan Johnson, Eric Joyce, Tessa Jowell, Barbara Keeley, Sadiq Khan, David Lammy, Chris Leslie, Ivan Lewis, Ian Lucas, Pat McFadden, Fiona McTaggart, Anne McEchin, Alan Michael, Gareth Thomas, Emily Thornberry, Stephen Tim, Stephen Twig, Rosie Winterton, Sean Woodward and Ian Wright. Uh, the list is taken from Labour List. Um, I've excluded the ones who aren't um, confirmed to be running, so we can expect to be added to that list 
um, the people who don't win the leadership election. Uh, and possibly a, a couple of other people. Jack Dromey's name has been mentioned. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that turns out. It's the first time Labour's been through this policy, this process, obviously for for some time since uh, well, since before 1997. Um, and so for a lot of MPs, uh, Labour MPs now, this will be completely new. A lot of new people have come in since 97. And so it's going to be interesting to see uh, how the votes go. I would have thought that all of the people running for leadership would get on, get into the top 19 without any problem, with the possible exception of Diane Abbott. The, the traditional left-wing block within the Labour Party, the campaign group, really isn't very strong anymore. So I'm not sure if she'd actually um, get enough votes. Um, it, it, it's hard to say. But either way, it's going to be an interesting few days in British politics. We've had the Lib Dem party conference this week, which passed almost completely unnoticed, apart from a speech by Vince Cable, which was trailed in the press as sort of Vince the Red, um, hammering the banks and so on. Uh, if you actually listen to the speech, it's um, quite a capitalist, free market speech. He just thinks there were some excesses. And then we've got the Conservative um uh, party conference the week after Labour's. The only possible upset at the Lib Dem one would have been um, particular complaints about the coalition that didn't really come to a head or anything. Um, and so it remains to see what happens at the Labour Party conference, who is chosen as the Labour Party leader. The announcement's made tomorrow and I'll put up a video um, with some reflections on what's happened and what it all means. In the meantime, I'm Landon Cole. I'll see you next time.